Out of the way, Dobie. Hi, welcome back to Auto Tip Off. Enjoy today's video. Hi, internet friends. This is our review of the San Lorenzo 64 meter Attila. I'm just wondering if I'll get through to the end of the review. Compose yourself, Jenny girl. It's a boat, but what a boat, or should I say ship or yacht? When I thinks about yachts, I automatically think sailboats. Anyway, on with the review, help somebody, here goes. It used to be so straightforward, you have to build a longer yacht if you needed additional room. Designers of super yachts are progressively inventing new methods to squeeze every last cubic centimeter out of their designs these days. San Lorenzo's new flagship is at the forefront of this movement. The 64 Steel Attila punches far above her weight, from the helicopter to the spa center to the wine cellar and the enormous beach club. Without doing any more on this review, just looking at her, right away I fell in love with this boat, it absolutely gorgeous. The Argentinian owner desired as much internal space as feasible, ample meat and wine storage, comprehensive movie facilities, a whole deck for the owner and his wife, as well as stowage for a 10-meter tender and a large beach club area were all on the owner's wish list. I think the owner must like his food, wine and is a movie buff Jenny. Taking a look at others of a similar size, Silver Angel, a 64.5 meter Bonetti from 2009, weighs 1,407 gross tons, whereas Nuvi Cantieri Ligori's 1991 Shanas is 63.5 meters and weighs little over 1,130 gross tons. The majority of contemporary yachts of this length have a displacement of between 1,200 and 1,400 gross tons. Attila, on the other hand, boasts a generous 1,600 gross tonnage thanks to her 64.25 meter length, 13 meter beam, and 5 decks. That's the type of room you'll find on a much larger yacht, like the 73 meter Hasna, which has 1,577 gross tons. Attila's design teams had to go outside the box to make the most of the available space on board. The connection between the 78 square meter beach club, which has two fold-down balconies, a hammam, and a sauna, and the vast outdoor space on the main deck, which concentrates on the 5 meter long swimming pool, is particularly remarkable. The desire to provide continuity between the beach club, and an area we could call the El Fresco Veranda, the rear part of the main deck where the pool is also situated, one of the cool pool features is a stylish bottom, allowing dappled light to filter into the beach club below. The inside of the beach club links to the main saloon by an open marble-lined stairway that divides midway, and forms a double height area with 4.6 meter ceiling heights towering above it, which is equally stunning. It's more than simply a method to get upstairs, since it looks like a sweeping 19th century staircase, it provides the sense of additional space, and that feeling when you go in. The customer is a seasoned boat owner who already owns a San Lorenzo 46 deal. This indicates that he is familiar with yard owner Massimo Perotti and had a clear concept of what he wanted from the start. He said he had faith in San Lorenzo's ability to construct the boat of his dreams. The boat should be optimized for family usage, not merely as a show of prosperity or a location to do business, according to his design brief. That's why the beach club's size was non-negotiable, why there had to be capacity for two tenders, including a 10-meter limo and an 8-meter sports tender, and why there are five massive television screens on board, including two in the owner's suite. Apparently the owner enjoys watching movies with his family and friends and discussing what they saw. Francesco Paschkowski and Margareta Kasprini came together on the interior design. From the start, the owner was clear about what he wanted, a warm and inviting ambience with subtle elegance. Large common places where he could feel at home while on board were also essential if he wanted to spend time on board with his family and friends. This boat also emphasizes the importance of eating and food preparation spaces. Only the beach club lacks tables, although it does include a huge marble-topped bar and comfortable chairs for resting with a drink or snack. There's a large barbecue in the dining area of the main deck, a request that was particularly related to the nationality of the ship owner. The area has a 60 fireproof stainless steel, with an advanced smoke removal system were actually necessary for an open fire in an enclosed space. So I'm told it's used for teppanyaki cooking and grilling meat. The importance on food continues down to the tank deck, 
where a Mokita marble-lined meat storage room and a 500-bottle climate-controlled wine cellar await, that could be your space, Carl. The owner believes that time spent together over lunch or supper may be memorable. He's not the only one, if only, come on girl nearly there. The galleys and pantries, meanwhile, had to be well-equipped and pleasant. Where qualified cooks are essential, and the team must have fun while cooking. The galley is a pleasant place to work, where crew members feel good and are able to move freely across decks. They have their own specialized multimedia space on the tank deck in addition to the 18 crew cabins. I'm beginning to wish one them was mine. San Lorenzo has done a good job of employing basic, beautiful lines and this constraint is arguably the greatest way to characterize the brand's design language. On the upper deck, there is an extra pool, that, as well as features like the elegant windows and the huge infinity pool on the main deck, a feature that has already proven to be successful on the smaller 52 steel. From the upper saloon spa pool to the beach club balcony, the outside provides a variety of social places. On the other hand, I agree that the secret to this boat is what occurs on the inside rather than what happens on the outside. In the end, the inside wins since because San Lorenzo were able to fulfill the owner's desire for such large internal volumes. The spaces provided Pashkowski with a large canvas on which to deliver a challenging brief. To characterize the interior style, I think he coined the phrase, contemporary South American. It uses mostly natural materials, such as exquisite Nabok leathers, six different stones, and warm teak for the stairs and floors. Crocodile leather is utilized in the owner's bed headboard, there are lacquered panels in the corridors, and wallpaper is used everywhere. The furniture, which included low white couches, come primarily from Italian manufacturers such as Baxter, Monotti, and Max Alto. Pashkowski developed a few pieces particularly for the collection, notably the dining tables. Art on board has a peculiar quality to it. From his nick in the quiet upper saloon, a curious-looking golden gorilla keeps his eyes focused on diners. In the main atrium, a more well-thought-out item has been placed at the foot of that stunning staircase. Two bronze castings face each other across the stairwell, on the left, a heroic figure of a man struggling through the wall, with only his torso and a knee visible, on the right, the same guy pauses on his way back through the wall, with just his rippling muscles visible. A sequence of golden lily leaves unfurl over the main dining table, with delicate copper piping for a flower stem and a bright LED at the top. They are made by Catalani and Smith and are elegant without being flashy. I think Pashkowski found them all and the owner picked them.